Before we get started, can we just take a second to appreciate how much I have glowed up in like the past six months since I posted that first video? Like, much appreciated. Hello everybody, my name is Tulubi and this year I will be an incoming college freshman at Stanford University. So I'm in the class of 2024. Four years ago, of course, I was a freshman in high school. We don't talk about that very often. I don't think anyone like reflects on freshman year and says like those were the good times. I peaked freshman year. I don't think anyone has ever said that, ever. I certainly did not. With that being said, it's a super important foundational time college application wise and that you can really get a good baseline for everything on your application in your freshman year, like starting clubs and things like that and just really setting the tone for all of high school. If you do a good job of that in your freshman year, it's super helpful all throughout high school. I'm just going to be going through the most important things that I learned to do and to not do in my freshman year of high school and sharing those with you guys because I feel like a lot of this no one really tells you about. So I figured I might give you guys a little bit of a heads up uh, if your freshman year is starting right now, which I know it is for a lot of people. Before we get started, I just want to clarify that these are all my opinion. I'm not telling you you have to do any of these things to get into a good college. I'm not saying any of these are required. These are all just tips and tricks that I think might help. Also, this is just from my point of view. So if something really, really helped me and you think about it and you think, man, that probably wouldn't work for me, that's okay. So with all of that random stuff said, I'm gonna get started. Just some background information about me throughout high school. I had a 4.0 unweighted GPA all throughout high school and I went to a public high school in the Florida Panhandle. If you want to know anything else about my stats, I do have a stats video out that I will link at the end of this video. If I look down, it's because I'm looking at my tips. I have a lot of them all listed out here. So my first tip for you guys is to join lots of clubs your freshman year. When I applied to colleges, I kind of got the impression that if you had an activity or a sport or anything like that, an extracurricular that you did for all four years of high school, it looked really, really good to colleges. It shows commitment and it's also a great way to get leadership positions. If you're on a team for a very long time, you're a lot more likely to get a leadership position. So in joining a lot of clubs freshman year, you're really able to see what you enjoy doing. You don't have to continue everything from your freshman year in your junior year. I kind of switched around my extracurriculars to figure out what I really wanted to do. In fact, I had played lacrosse for seven years before high school. And then after my freshman year, I had to drop it because it conflicted with my academics. And then when I dropped lacrosse, I picked up weightlifting, which I did for all four years of high school. Don't be afraid to switch around your schedule and drop activities and pick others up because you really want to work towards finding those ones that you really have a deep connection in, especially if they help get you leadership positions, which look so good on the Common App and college applications. Tip number two is probably the absolute biggest tip, always prioritize your academics. A sports team will look great on a college application, but it's not gonna look as good as an A in a class. If you're sacrificing a sports team that practices seven days a week and doesn't let you study in order to be on a varsity sports team, at, but it makes you get a B or a C in a class, as opposed to if you had that extra study time, you could get an A. That is not gonna look good to colleges. I promise you they'd rather see an A in a class than a sport or a club or an extracurricular that takes up way too much of your time. Now, this is just the case for the majority of people because the majority of people aren't scholarship athletes. If you're a scholarship athlete and that's what you're really working towards, of course, sports are your priority. But if you're doing a sport just because you know it looks good on a college application or just for fun, make sure it's something that doesn't compromise your academics. 
on a side note, kind of going with that point, make sure you're doing your activities because you have a genuine interest in them because these activities are what help you build your essays later on. It's really difficult to write an essay about a club or activity that you don't really care about, but you can write a really, really powerful essay if you find those clubs that you really enjoy and you spend your time on those and not just resume builders that you don't really have a huge interest in. Now, this next tip does not apply to everyone because I know not everyone takes AP exams but if you are planning on taking any of your freshman year, this definitely applies to you. And the tip is basically be smart with your AP exams and know your limits, but also push yourself, which is a super thin line to walk, I know. Colleges really want to see you taking really difficult classes and excelling in those classes. But again, if your course load is going to cause you to get B's in a class, be careful with what you're taking. AP exams, if they are difficult, can really, really be a struggle. And if they're easy, they can be a great GPA booster. So really be smart about which ones you're choosing to take and make sure you know that you'll have time to study for these exams before you sign up for them. My school actually only gives freshmen access to one in-person AP class. And when I was in school, that was AP World. They've now shifted it back and changed that to AP Human Geography. Whether I was a freshman this year or back four years ago, they still only give us access to one freshman AP exam. So when I first took my AP exams, I kind of just dipped my toe in the water and got used to it. But if your school doesn't do that and they kind of let you run free and do whatever you want, make sure you're careful with signing up for those and try to find that balance between I'll be able to study for all of them, but I'm still pushing myself. My next tip kind of goes along with all of this um, working on your academics. Develop study skills and study plans that work for you. Your freshman year is a super, super important time to just lay out everything that you want to do and make sure you get into that really good study routine. Set up your study skills and really stick to those. If you get into a routine, it's a really great thing and it almost encourages you to not break that routine once you do it day after day after day. My next tip is super big and super important to make sure that you don't miss anything ever and it is use a planner. I 100% recommend finding a planner, color coding it if that's what you want to do. Make sure you find that one that's laid out in the way you want to because that's going to encourage you to use it. If you buy a planner that you don't like, you're not going to want to use it. Planners are so extremely helpful. I know I would have forgotten tons of assignments if I didn't have a planner. My planner really helped me stay focused and never forget an assignment. The next tip is that you can't be afraid to self-study or self-teach if you don't love one of your teachers or if one of your teachers doesn't explain a lesson the way that you understand it. There are so many resources out there, Khan Academy, YouTube videos, so many different things for you to be able to self-study. Uh, speaking of, I have a ton of YouTube channels that kind of helped me survive high school because uh, I went to public high school. So I ended up actually having to self-study and self-teach for AP exams and classes and tons of different things. So if you guys want me to make a video on how I self-study and the YouTube channels, that helps me kind of survive high school, uh, comment down below because I don't know if that's something that you guys would want to see. Uh, it was super helpful for me, so maybe it is. Um, but back to the tip, use your resources very, very wisely. Use YouTube. There's so many great channels out there. If you don't understand a lesson, search it up, and I promise so many different videos on that topic will pop up. My next tip is to work with anyone who can help you set out a four-year plan for your high school and the courses you want to take. Uh, I think most, if not all, schools have guidance counselors, but I know that they're either not the best at some schools or not super accessible at other schools. Try to find an adult, whether that's your guidance counselor or a local school counselor or a third-party source that has knowledge about your school, try to find some adult that will be able to help you set out a four-year plan for the classes you wanna take and understand when you need to take each class to successfully get through all of your coursework. I did this before I even started my freshman year and it was so incredibly helpful to me. I had everything set out and I never needed to stress or worry about, am I gonna be able to get all of my credits finished? Another tip about your academic scheduling 
is try to take the most difficult schedule possible that you know you can complete. When you're applying to college, a really big factor for admissions officers is strength and rigor of your academic schedule. If you are taking the most difficult courses possible and you're excelling in those courses, that looks really, really good to academic advisors. I have watched multiple videos on people actually going in and reading their admissions file from uh, Stanford and even other schools. A big thing is that your admissions officer will rank your rigor of your course schedule. So you want to make sure that you're taking the most difficult courses that you feel comfortable taking. I'm going to really emphasize feel comfortable taking. If your mental health or anything is going to struggle as a result of you taking extremely difficult classes, know your limits once again, and don't feel pressured to take the absolute most difficult classes if you know that's not the right scenario for you. If you do feel like you can push yourself to take very, very difficult classes and lots of APs or lots of honors classes, please do it. Looping back to clubs and activities, I think it's a great idea to find one thing that you like to do that is super out of the box, whether it's an extracurricular, a job that's super different and unique, even a hobby. It doesn't have to be like an organized group. It can be really anything. Just find one thing that's super out of the box and interesting about you, a hobby, an extracurricular, a job, anything like that. Um, because that'll really help you when you write your college admissions essays later on. A lot of the times, some of the strongest essays are things that take an extracurricular activity, job, hobby that is super, super out of the box, and they use them to explain their personality through that activity. A really big study tip that I have is to use your weekends very wisely. During the transition from middle to high school, you're definitely going to change how you use your weekends. I know that I could usually back in middle school get all of my homework done Friday afternoon and then have Friday night, Saturday, Sunday to hang out with friends or go do things with my family. In high school, a lot of that changes. You're going to want to set aside at least one day every weekend or a half of Saturday and Sunday both to get all of your homework and all of your studying done. My last thing, if you do poorly your freshman year because you kind of slack off or you really try to overexert yourself and halfway through the year you just can't keep up, it's a real struggle to get your GPA back up after that. GPAs are super important to colleges and keeping a 4.0 is one of the absolute best things you can do to increase your college application chances of success. I know it's not achievable for everyone and I'm not saying it's 100% required, but if you have a 4.0 unweighted GPA, that is one of the best tools you can have to get into college. Again, not required, just very helpful. Make sure you are prioritizing your academics your freshman year so you don't mess up your GPA because that can impact all four years of your high school so poorly and so negatively. You know, the last thing, honestly, don't stop in the middle of the hallways. If you're walking to class and you're like, is this my class? Is this my class? I will bulldozer run you over. I'm speaking for all of the sophomores, juniors, seniors when I say this. If you stop in the middle of the hallway, we actually hate you. We are so mad if you stop the flow of traffic in the school hallway. It's just so frustrating. So with all of that being said, there are my academic and college planning tips for high school freshmen. It really is a fun year to play around with clubs and things and find new groups of friends, especially if you're in a totally new environment. I know I haven't touched on it much this video and I kind of formatted this video as if it were a normal school year, but um, right now if you're watching this in 2020, or maybe even 2021, COVID obviously um, is kind of messing everything up. So I know I talk a lot about sitting in class and walking in the hallway. Um, and I know that for some people, that's not even a thing right now. You are at home on a computer. So not every aspect of this video is applicable to everyone, especially right now, I know. If you're a freshman right now, you can leave any questions for me down below in the comment section. And if you don't have any questions, just leave me a comment about what your favorite part of high school has been so far. 
If you made it this far in the video, be sure to leave me a like. It tells the YouTube algorithm that I make good content and that they should recommend it to other people. And if you enjoy my content, please subscribe. I make tons of videos on college applications and tips throughout high school. I'm starting college at Stanford in just a few weeks, so be sure to subscribe if you want to follow along my journey at Stanford. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!